Digital Literacy to Evaluate the Trustworthiness of Online Sources Assessment for College Students in Universitas Indonesia I'm Yasmin, from the Faculty of Humanities. As we get connected to the world through the Internet, we also open up our door to a massive load of information that may or may not be true. For example, we often receive unverified source of information from our family, usually the older members, who unknowingly share questionable, quote-unquote, news. We might reason that it's because they're not used to using the internet. But are the young generations really better at evaluating the trustworthiness of an online source? This presentation is going to look further into that. A group of researchers from the Stanford Histroy Education Group, or SHEG, tested this out. They'd like to see if young Americans, who are still in schools and colleges are digitally literate. That is if they can spot fake, biased, and questionable online sources. Digital literacy means that one has the ability to find, evaluate, utilize, share, and create content using information technologies in the Internet. Turns out, the results are, as they describe it, bleak. Being a digital native, a generation born into the advances of technology and the Internet, does not automatically grant the skills to surf the Internet wisely. So I tried to do the same with our young people sitting in one of the prominent universities in Indonesia, which is Universitas Indonesia. The research attempts to investigate how our educated group, or the Indonesian students, criticize texts that are available online. The texts chosen are about the Indonesian presidential race in 2019, relevant to the political situation that generates a lot of false claims circulating the internet. The question that this research wants to answer is how do university-level students in UI critically evaluate political posts that they find online? During the month of May 2019, we showed five online news to 50 students in five faculties in Universitas Indonesia. Their answers are then classified into three levels, beginning, emerging, and mastery. The results show that, although the respondents are overall digitally literate, few are actually on mastery level. The problem lies in their reasoning. They may be able to evaluate whether the news is reliable or not, however, they don't quite know why it's credible or inaccurate. The respondents mostly rely on their limited knowledge of the issue or on the credibility of the news source. The respondents are also too quick to decide. The test does not put any time restriction. Meaning, they do not have to evaluate within seconds. They have plenty of time to do research before deciding. Yet, only few go to the internet to search for additional information on the issue. The solution can be summarized into two words. Lateral, reading. Lateral reading is reading beyond the text. It means that readers are to read beyond the headlines and the body, and verify the trustworthiness with other trusted external sources. These respondents' level of reasoning is considered mastery. The findings, however, show only 18% of respondents read laterally. The others mostly accept information as valid, from their knowledge of the website's credibility, or familiarity. A similar way of verifying news is from who is quoted in news. This is problematic since the person quoted may not be a reliable source, or may not even lend their voice. In other words, there is a chance that their names are irresponsibly used. Those giving reasons like these, are called emerging. And then there's a small group of respondents, at 14%, who fails at identifying false news. They are still at beginning level. Those giving any incoherent reason are also considered beginning. They can't explain why they trust the news or not trust it. From this research, we can see that reading beyond the text can help identify the news credibility. For example, stepping outside the text, the respondents can see the bias that the news platform carries. One of the data was released by a news platform that supports only one presidential candidate. Every other articles in their website can show this striking feature. Lateral reading in this case means looking at the surrounding texts or their code texts. Another example is related to fact checking. One news article in the data, falsely names an international prominent figure as their source. The practice, also known as name-dropping, can claim credibility. However, 
A simple Google check can tell if the naming is completely made up. So if lateral reading is crucial to our reading practice, why don't more respondents do this? The most possible explanation is probably the massive flow of information that was mentioned at the very beginning of this presentation. It is understandably difficult to process every piece of information we receive online. It is then common for us to read only the headlines and draw conclusions that are hasty and often leads to misunderstanding. However, there is another explanation given by Kahan, which is motivated reasoning. It simply means that people have biases, and they choose to base their perception on emotional reasoning. In other words, they are quite satisfied with what they consider right or wrong, regardless of what the hard truth shows. This may be why the respondents are quick to judge the data without the help of other verification tools. In conclusion, our students have shown a comparatively better reading skills than those of the students that the Shea Group in America sampled. Our students have also been quite critical in responding to online sources. However, the scope of this research is not as massive as those conducted in America. A bigger and wider research on our young educated groups in Indonesia will give a more accurate description of our Indonesian students and their critical reading skills. Thanks for listening to my presentation. I'm Yasmin Annabel Panjaitan. Have a good day everyone.